Suppose I'm Blondie. All right. <clears throat> I walk in the front door, don't I? Mm -hmm. And I say, uh, hello, Blondie. Oh, hello, dear. Hello. Uh, <clears throat> darling, do you know what happened to me today? No, darling, and I'd like to hear about it. Well, wait a minute. You're suspicious already. Am I? Sure. You don't even give me a chance to start explaining. <laughs> okay, start. You see, dear, when I left here this morning with Joan, she was going to take me to meet Marvin over at the garage. And did you? Uh, well, yes and no. <laughs> Face funny hat, that's what my blondie is. Lovable feet, both flat, that's what my dagwood is. Blondie's not always right, I let her think she is. All of my thoughts are bright, long as he thinks they're his. Life with us is fun and crazy, baby doubling. Us and Daisy, what a family. Incredible, bumsteadable. <laughs> You'll miss your bus. Watch out, you'll burn your stew. Nothing's too much for us. As long as with me there's you. Dagwood and Blondie. Blondie and Dagwood. Always with me there's you. I'll take it. What's your name? Fuddles. 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 Uh-huh. Why are you delivering the papers? I never did see so many measles. You got the measles? No, I got the papers, but I'd rather have the measles. Bumstead <laughs> Whistles. Blondie objects to you going fishing every Sunday, doesn't she? Well, if you join the trout club, then she couldn't object, see? Uh, but Marvin, when you least expect Blondie to couldn't, <laughs> she does. I know, but a $400 membership for 200 bucks. What's 200 bucks? Chicken feed. Sounds like chicken feed when you say it, but when Blondie says it, sounds like the national debt. Ah, that's your technique. Have you tried flattering her? Not lately. Well, try it. Tell her how good her cooking is. Tell her what a great wife she is. Tell her how beautiful she is. And when you got her in a good mood, spring it. Yeah, what if she springs first? Listen, you can catch more flies with sugar than you can with vinegar. Only remember, not too much sugar. Not too much sugar. Oh, Marvin! Yes, darling, coming. I'm on the run, sweetheart. You get it? Uh, yes, darling, coming. On the run, sweetheart. Baby Duffin, you shouldn't trip Daddy like that. You'll get hurt. Ooh. Daddy, hmm? Daddy, will you read me the funny paper? No, dear, I have to. Listen, Baby Dumpling, Daddy wants to talk to Mommy about a very important thing, see? And if you'll, if you'll just keep quiet until it's all settled, Daddy will read you the funny paper. If everything turns out right. You mean if you get to join the trout club? Yeah. Blondie, would you believe it? I could smell that good old coffee all the way out in the backyard. I'm sorry, dear. I forgot to make it.
Why don't you make yourself a cup of tea? There's hot water in the tea kettle. Tea? Oh, sure. Come on, baby dumpling. Daddy will help you in the chair. There. The toast is in the oven. Okay, dear, I'll tend to everything. You just keep on with what you're doing. Whatever it is you're doing. Permanent weave, three dollars. Manicure, fifty cents. Facial, a dollar and a quarter. Sixty cents for tobacco? <laughs> ah, toast! There's one thing you can make, Blondie, and that's good toast. It's branded. No, it isn't. It's golden brown. That's the way I like it. Your mother sure knows how to cook. Oh, tea, dear? Yes. Sugar, dear? Please. Uh, <clears throat> you have your hair fixed in a new way this morning, haven't you, dear? Certainly it's becoming. You sure look awful pretty. You're using too much sugar. I am not. I just said that... Oh. There. I don't feel pretty. What's the matter, darling? I was awake half the night dreaming. I dreamed that we were all eating breakfast, just like we are now. And you asked me for $200. It was the most horrible dream I've ever had. Horrible? <laughs> What's so horrible about me asking you for $200? We had a violent argument. Mm -hmm. And I killed you. <coughs> what, what on earth's the matter with you? Hit him on the back. <coughs> oh, I'm all right. Now, let's see. What were we talking about? Hmm? Oh, yes, my dream. <laughs> Wasn't it silly? Why would you want $200? Yes, why would I want $200? To join the cow club. What's this about joining the trout club? Nothing, nothing at all, dear. Marvin Williams and I were just talking. How nice it would be if I got a membership to the trout club. Understand, we were just talking. And he said, maybe, maybe you, maybe. How did you kill me, Blondie? So it wasn't a dream after all. It was a premonition. But, Blondie, I never asked for the money. You dreamed I asked for it. Shame. Shame. Every Sunday you've gone fishing, and your child and I have sent you away with a smile. I've been silent about it, and I shall continue to be silent about it. But now you're striking at the pulse of this family. The budget. There it is at your elbow. Pick it up. Open it. Read it. Permanent wave, three dollars. So, trying to put me in a bad light. Trying to make our child think I'm selfish. No, no, wait a minute, Blondie. You said to read. I'm not complaining about the permanent wave. Turn the page. Pick it up. Look at it. That's the new coat I'm not going to get. But, but I like it. So do I like it. But I've been over the budget 20 times, and I can't afford it. I'd made up our minds that we wouldn't touch a nickel in the savings account. Now, you're asking for $200 to join a club of fish. Oh, but, Blondie... Don't interrupt. You haven't the slightest consideration for Baby Dumplin' or myself. Furthermore... You're the most loyal and devoted husband in the whole neighborhood. You haven't any vices either. You're, you're good to your wife and your child. There isn't a woman in this town who's more proud of her husband than I am. <clears throat> then what, why can't... Uh, uh... Hello, Alvin. Hello. Alvin, we're having a little talk. So would you mind running along and coming back in half an hour or so? Why, no, Blondie, that's not nice. Well, after all, 
Alvin came over to see Baby Dumpling. <laughs> Didn't you, Alvin? Huh? No. I came over to hear you eat your toast. Go ahead and eat, dear. That's ill-mannered. Well, it's ill-mannered for people to listen to other people eat. No, it's not. It's ill-mannered to eat so people can listen. Let's see here, everybody. There's one thing I want to say. The doorbell's ringing. Uh, no. Oh, dear. Who can that be? Oh, no, no. You can't go. Your shirt's wrinkled and you haven't your tie. Oh, well, I'm not dressed either. I'll go see who it is, Miss Bumstead. Oh, Alvin, would you? And come back and tell us who it is. Hmm? Bumsteads? Yes, sir. Then you're Baby Dumpling. May I come in? Yes, sir. I'm Joan Forrester, an old, old friend of your father's. You're not so old. What a lovely thing to say. I could kiss you for that. Do you mind if I kiss you? Not at all. There, how is that? Okay. Okay? That's the sort of an answer your daddy would give. Did you kiss my daddy? Oh, um, maybe. A long time ago. How long? Before he met your mother. Now, is there anything else you want to know? Come on in the living room. Take off your coat. Oh, but really, I... Go on, take it off. Oh. Tell me more. More? About what? About you and, uh, Daddy kissing and everything. <clears throat> well, I... <laughs> Baby, you go in and see who it is. You're a very bright little boy. How old are you? Six. Were you engaged? Six. Oh, but you couldn't possibly be six. Why, your mother and father... What's your full name? Alvin Fuddle. Oh, good gracious, I'm in the wrong house. <gasps> oh, this is Baby Dumpling. Dear me, I thought that... Baby Dumpling, meet the lady who was almost your mother. Now, oh, what do you suppose that was? Maybe the win. I'll go and see. I look all right. After all, this is my home. I mean, uh, our home. Wait a minute. Now, you be sure to come back and tell me who it is. Hmm. You see? I'm an old, old friend of your father's. And how? Joe! Thank you. <laughs> how are you? Just fine. How are you? Oh, just fine. How have you been? Just fine. And you? Oh, just fine. And things seem to be just fine. Until Mommy comes in. Oh, how's the Jenkins real estate company getting along? That's what I came to see you about. What? The Weatherby deal. Oh. <laughs> My boss signed the contracts. Your boss wants them the first thing tomorrow morning, so your boss suggested that I leave them with you today. Thank you. Well, I really must be running along. Oh, don't go yet. Have a seat. Oh, but I really haven't time. Oh. Are, are you comfortable? Oh, quite. Don't you kiddies go away. We won't. We'll wait till Mommy gets here.
I'll never forget that night. Me neither. I wore my first real evening gown. Sure, I remember. It was all silver. <sighs> Dagwood, how sweet of you to remember. I'll never forget that. What happened? Dagwood, you might at least help me up. We have company, dear. Why, Joan? It's so nice to see you, dear. Blondie, darling, it's nice to see you. Uh, sit down. And not you, dear. I meant Joan. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Joan? Just fine. And you? Just fine. How have you been getting along? Just fine. They're starting all over again. You're looking splendid, isn't she, Dagwood? Sure. She looks like a million dollars. <laughs> Thank you. Dagwood, don't you think that's a lovely coat? Dagwood has been nagging me to buy a new coat. Why, Dagwood, how nice. Oh, I... Dagwood, dear, you've forgotten. You were going fishing. <laughs> I... Huh? He just has to go fishing. As a matter of fact, he goes to the Swan Lake Trout Club every Sunday. Oh, do you belong to the Trout Club? <laughs> Not yet, I... but I've been coaxing him to join. <laughs> I was telling... Dagwood, this morning, that I dreamed he joined the trout club. <laughs> and she killed him. <laughs> Dagwood, you'll be late. You ought not to keep Marvin waiting. Marvin waiting? I thought... Huh? Oh, dear. There goes that doorbell again. Huh? I'll get it, dear. Good morning, Marvin. Won't you come in? Oh, you're in a hurry? Well, that's too bad. Oh, yes, Dagwood's here. You see, an old friend dropped in. Oh, no. He's going. Oh, oh the friend won't mind. He'll be right over. Goodbye. Dagwood. That was Marvin Williams. You were to meet him right away, dear, at the Midway Garage. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, but, Bonnie, if you don't want me to go... Oh, you'd better hurry, dear. Well, Joan, uh, I want to thank you for, for bringing over... Dagwood, the phone. I'll get it. Hello. Marvin. He lives right next door, you know. You're at the Midway Garage? I don't know. Okay, goodbye. Marvin certainly gets around, doesn't he? Yes. Blondie, that was Marvin Williams. Uh, how could... You said... You'd better hurry, dear. You know how he hates to wait. He wanted to know about joining the trout club. Do whatever you think is best, dear. You know I never interfere. Yeah? Gee, thanks. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye, Dagwood. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> okay, I get it. Goodbye. Guess I'd better be running along, too. Why, you only just came. Let's sit down and have a long talk. Thanks so much, dear, but I really shouldn't. You see, I just dropped by to give Dagwood some papers for his boss. Oh, <laughs> Uh, well, it's been nice seeing you again, anyway. I forgot my creel and rod. You mustn't go yet, Joan. We have so many things to talk about. I forgot my creel and rod. Yes, you said that, dear. You'd better hurry. Which way are you going, Dagwood? East. I'll drive you. But, Joan, dear, he doesn't want to put you to all that trouble. <laughs> Why, it's no trouble at all. Huh? Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Have a 
good time. Well, Mrs. Bumstead, you did the best you could. Tony, you can get anything out of your wife you just know how to handle. Now, Bumstead was having trouble with his about going fishing. So I gave him a little advice. You know what happened? What? Bumstead and I are going fishing. Oh. What do you think of that? Well, I think one of us better go fishing. at the Trout Club, and this is out of the way. We're not... We can't fish here. You're not going to start that again. Relax, darling. You know where you are? It looks like the place we... It is. Oh. We used to have some good old heart-to-heart -heart talks here, and we're going to have another one right now. Mommy! Mommy! What is it, darling? My tooth, it let me see. Oh, yes. It ought to come out. Hold still, darling, and let Mommy pull it. No. It'll hurt. He's a fraidy cat. Alvin, when we wish your opinion, we'll ask for it. <coughs> Please, darling. It won't hurt a bit. It will, too. It already does. Oh, oh dear. I want the Swan Lake Trout Club. Run upstairs, dear, and lie down. And don't touch your tooth until Mommy talks to Daddy. I tell you, it was that big. But it got... Tap room. Who? Mr. Williams is for your friend, Mr. Bumstead. He isn't here. Mr. Bumstead no, is... Just to... Find out who wants him. Who's calling him, please? It's Mrs. Bumstead. Oh. Well, tell the operator to tell her that... No, 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 say that... Oh, gosh, I guess I better talk to her myself. Uh, put the call through, number one booth. Hello, Blondie, this is Marvin. Where's Dagwood, Marvin? Oh, he's around somewhere. Why? What's the matter? He's there then. Well, of course he's there. I mean, I mean he's here. Well, I, I don't know whether I could locate him right away or not, Blondie. You see, he might be out on the stream somewhere. But it might take a long time to find him. All right, I'll do my best. Yes, sir. Well, I thought you were Mr. Bumstead. That's all I wanted to know. Hello, Blondie. What is it? Dagwood, Baby Dumplin' has a loose tooth. Oh, is that all? What? That wasn't me, dear. It was somebody talking behind me here. Hey, you guys, keep quiet and talking to my wife. Listen, dear, all you have to do is tie a string to it and tie the other end of the string to a doorknob. Well, well, tell him it's a game. 
All right. Sure. Sure, I'll be home as soon as I can get there. Okay, lovey. Goodbye, lovey. Lovey? He never called me lovey before. No, no! See, just tie this string around the tooth and it will stop it from hurting. <coughs> You'll do something. No, I won't. I won't even come near you. Look, I'll do it first and show you how easy it is. See, it's easy. Blondie objects to your joining the Trout Club, doesn't she? Oh, no. Uh, you see, the budget. Uh, we just can't afford it. How much would it cost? $200. Look, David, I have some extra money lying in the bank. The interest you get nowadays doesn't amount to anything anyway. Let me lend you $200. Oh, oh no. Oh, you can pay me back any way you like. A dollar a week is all right. Uh-uh. I bought a suit once a dollar a week, and I wore out the two pair of pants paying for it. You mean you can't take it because I'm a woman? I can't take money from a woman. You've been trying to wheedle it out of Blondie, haven't you? But that's different. Okay, fella, if there's that much difference. Come on, little doggie. We'll get along. <laughs> A jiffy. There's a good picture in there. You could kill a couple of hours while I fix your car. Oh, that's a grand idea. Blondie, oh, don't be silly. Blondie's probably out visiting somewhere. Yeah, but I... Oh, come on. Huh? Get your slice of the anniversary cake, please. Get your slice of the anniversary cake. I'm not hungry. Oh, Dagwood, you dummy. It's not that kind of cake. No? <laughs> Just step over to the desk and fill in your name, address, and telephone number, please. I don't want any. Here, Dagwood, I'll fill out your card. identification, please. Thank you. Get your slice of the anniversary cake. Oh, here, put my gloves in your pocket. Oh, 
nothing. I hope. This way, please. Just a minute. I'm looking for a friend. They told me over the garage I could find him here. Watch the pictures this way. I, I have to get a drink of water. Listen, Marvin, this whole thing is probably, well, sort of, kind of puzzling to you, isn't it? Well, sort of, kind of. <laughs> I imagine it'll be sort of, kind of to Blondie, too. Oh, I can explain it all right. You can? Sure. Okay. Suppose I'm Blondie. All right. <clears throat> I walk in the front door, don't I? Mm -hmm. And I say, uh, hello, Blondie. Oh, hello, dear. Hello. <clears throat> Darling, do you know what happened to me today? No, darling, and I'd like to hear about it. Well, wait a minute. You're suspicious already. Am I? Sure. You don't even give me a chance to start explaining. <laughs> okay, start. <laughs> you see, dear, when I left here this morning with Joan, she was going to take me to meet Marvin over at the garage. And did you? Uh, uh, well, yes and no. I, I mean, we passed him. Then Joan drove you all the way to the trout club. She was going to, but she couldn't start the engine again. And why did she stop the engine? Huh? <laughs> Get out of that one. <clears throat> well, I, uh, she... What? We just stopped to talk a little while. I understand. Anyway, the car wouldn't start. Now, what's that for? Huh? Oh, excuse me, I forgot I was blondie. Go ahead, dear. Then we took the car to a garage. Mm. Then Joan and I went to see a moving picture while we were waiting for it to be fixed. Mm. It's a truth, so help me. Oh, yeah. Well, Blondie will believe it. Listen, Dagwood, I'm your best friend, and even I won't believe it. Well, I'm going to tell her because it's a truth. Okay. Did you go fishing, dear? Dagwood Bumstead, how can you have the audacity to make up such a web of lies? When I talked to you over the telephone at the trial club myself this afternoon. You did? Sure, Blondie phoned you. What's he want? Oh, baby Dumpling had a loose tooth. So I told her how to pull it. Huh? She thanked me. Never even suspected I wasn't you. No kidding? Sure. She said goodbye, dear, and I said goodbye, lovey. And that's all there was to it. You said goodbye what? I said goodbye, lovey. I never called Blondie lovey. Well, then you better start right now. Guys, now what'll I do? Tell her you went fishing. But first, you better go through your pockets and make sure you haven't got anything on you that she might find. Oh. Uh-huh. They'll do it every time. But, Marvin... Keep looking. Tear it up. But, but it might be the number that wins some money. With your luck, you're going to win money. Good luck to you, pal. Yeah, good luck to me. Hello, Daddy. Hello, baby dumpling. Hello, Blondie. 
Did you catch any fish? Huh? Uh, well, I... Sure he caught some fish, didn't you, Dagwood? Uh, sure I caught some fish, didn't I, Dagwood? Uh, no, I mean, sure. <laughs> Here they are. Huh? <laughs> Don't forget about the lovey. Them? Sure. Yeah. Where's your creel and rod? Oh, here they are, Dagwood. Here you are. You can use mine and give them to me later. And don't forget about the lovey. Oh, yeah. Well, so long, pal. Had a swell day. Well, what have you been doing all day, lovey? Oh, nothing much. I went to church. Oh, yes, Baby Dumpling's tooth got loose. But I phoned you about that, didn't I? Oh, sure, lovey. Uh, let's see the tooth, lovey. <laughs> They'll grow back in again, lovey. <laughs> What's all this lovey business? Yeah. Uh, let's get in the house, lo lo uh, dear. Sure is nice to be home. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Take the fish back to the kitchen, dear. But I want to see Daddy act funny. Run along, dear. Do as Mother says. Uh, did I do something funny? Not particularly. Uh, guess I better get cleaned up or I won't be clean. I'll get it. Hello? Oh, oh, Dagwood. Did I leave my gloves in your pocket? Uh, why, no. Of course not. <clears throat> uh, certainly not. Uh, what would I want with a sewing machine? Sewing machine? Think I uh, want my wife sewing all the time on a sewing machine? Well, <clears throat> you call me at my office, but I warn you, I don't want any sewing machine. <laughs> that was a sewing machine, man. Hello, listen, I don't want any sew. Uh huh? It's the doorbell. Oh, I wasn't gonna let that guy get away with anything. Oh, I'll get it to you. Are you Dagwood Bumstead? Uh, no, uh, he moved from here. What is it, officer? We're looking for a man by the name of Bumstead. Oh, uh, that's me. Then why'd you say it wasn't you? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said Mrs. Bumstead. Uh, this is Mrs. Bumstead. Uh, How are you? Is this your fishing junk? Uh, no. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's my fishing junk. Here, hold this. Let me see that. Oh. Uh, say, this is my creel here. Then why did you say it wasn't? Yeah. Huh? Uh, well, it wasn't until I found my name on it, I thought it wasn't. Where did you find it, officer? Uh, what's the difference, dear, as long as they found it, huh? Well, you might at least thank the officers. Yeah. Uh, thanks, officers. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> oh, um, huh? by the way, where did you find it? In Lover's Lane. Yeah. Well, I guess that's where the thief took it, all right. The thief. Yeah. I'm 
sorry for not speaking to you all evening. Oh, that's all right. I didn't have anything special to talk about anyway. You acted so strange that I thought... Well, I thought you'd done something you shouldn't have done. You did? I know I acted mean about the trout club, too. Maybe... Maybe we can find some way for you to join. But I don't know just what way, but... I'm sorry I was mean about it all day, but... Oh, that's all right. Will you kiss me goodnight? Sure. Good night. Good night, dear. Blondie. Blondie, I did do something I shouldn't have done. I lied. You mean you didn't go fishing? How did you know that? Because I knew Marvin imitated you over the phone. Besides, you came home with a lot of fish. You never catch any fish when you go fishing. Joan drove you down in Lover's Lane, didn't she? And then she asked you why you were unhappy. How did you know that? Because I'm a woman. Oh. What happened after that? The car broke down. I said, then the car broke down. I heard you. The man said it would take two hours to fix it, so... So you went to a nightclub to wait. Yeah. Oh, you can't go to a nightclub in the afternoon. We went to see a picture show. After we got in there, I saw you all around me. And I knew you weren't there, so I got confused. Suddenly, everything went yellow in front of me. That's all, I guess. Are you sure that's all? That's all. Now everything's all right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that scheming hussy. Who? Never mind. Darling, I want you to do me just one favor. Don't you ever go out with her again. But Blondie, she only... Okay. Don't you even talk to her. But Blondie, I might have to talk to her. You see, we do business with the Jenkins Real Estate Company, and I might have to see her. Oh. All right. You can see her in an office. But you be sure the door is open. Be sure the door is open. Telephone. I'll get it, dear. It's probably the sewing machine man. I forgot to tell you about that. Run along, dear, and answer it. Hello? Mr. Bumstead? This is the manager of the Strand Theater speaking. We are pleased to inform you that you have been awarded one of the $200 slices in our anniversary cake. Okay. Much obliged. What's that? If you'll drop around tomorrow morning, we'll give you the prize money and our congratulations. Goodbye. Yeah. G goodbye. Oh. 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 $200. I could... Oh. No, I couldn't.
telephone, dear. Telephone? Uh, oh, yes, the telephone. It was the wrong number. Wrong number. Car broke down. What'd you say, dear? Nothing. Oh, thought you said something. for you, sir. I'm Dagwood Bumstead. Well, well, the lucky fellow. How do you do, Mr. Bumstead? How do you do? I always like to know something about our winners. Are you a married man, Mr. Bumstead? Yes. Any children? Uh, yes, sir. A uh, boy. Well, well, this will be quite a surprise for the family. <laughs> now, if you'll just give me the other end of this ticket. Ticket? Uh, I lost it. Lost it? Oh, that's too bad. But that happens occasionally. But we can get around it very easily. Just write your name, and we'll compare it with the signature on the ticket. I didn't sign the ticket. You didn't? Oh, I see. It's a woman's handwriting. Your wife, eh? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, we can have her down here in a few minutes. We haven't any phone. You haven't? Why, I called you last night. Here's the number right here. I, uh, we moved this morning. <laughs> There's something fishy about your story. Fishy? Uh, Yes, sir, there is. You see, I was supposed to go fishing. Uh, that is, my wife thought I went fishing. Oh, I get it. Get the other woman down here and we'll iron this thing out. Uh, but, but I promised my wife I wouldn't talk to her anymore, except on business. This is business. You're in an office. That's right. Open the door and I'll call her. Hundred sixty, hundred eighty, two hundred. There you are, Mrs. Bumstead. Thank you. Yeah, that leaves you a balance of only eighteen fifty. Yes, I know it. Took you a long time to save that. I hope you're planning to do something useful with it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do something very silly with it. I'm going to buy my husband a membership in a fish club. Mister, do you have any old dollar bills you don't need? Come on, baby. Oh, shucks. 160, 180, 200. There you are, Mr. Bumstead. <laughs> Thank you. Not at all. I hope you have the same kind of luck the next time you go fishing. <laughs> Come on, Dagwood. I'll give you a lift in my car. Yeah. Bye. Goodbye. Listen, Joan, if it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't have won this. So I think part of it's yours. Oh, don't be absurd. Hmm? Oh, giving money to another woman. How would you explain that to Blondie? Oh, oh Blondie doesn't know I want it. Well, here's your chance to join the trout club without a family wrangle. Oh, I couldn't do that. You see, Blondie's had her heart set on a coat, and I haven't been what I ought to be, and I thought for once I ought to be. That's right, noble of you. Hmm? But uh, do you know her size? Oh, she's about uh, here on me. I don't think that would help the sales lady very much. You better take me along. I'm Blondie's size. Oh, but Joan, you see, I promise... Not to see me anymore. Yeah. Well, if Blondie wants to know who helped you pick out the coat, tell her it was the sewing machine man. Fourth law, ladies' coats and furs. Uh, pardon me. Good afternoon, Mrs. Bumstead. Did you decide to take the coat? No. You see, something unexpected's come up, and I... I find I can't afford it. That's too bad. Could I have just one more look at it before I give it up? Why, certainly. Thank you. Excuse me.
ticket and a half for Reno. Thank you. Your bus doesn't leave until 9.30. You'll have quite a wait. I didn't know it, but I've been waiting for this bus all my life. So a few more hours won't make any difference. I know just how you feel. I wish I could sell a ticket to Niagara Falls. Mister, do you have any old dollar bills you don't need? No. No. Come on, baby. Oh, shucks. We will send for Daisy when we get back from Reno. We will send for Daisy when we get back from Reno. No, no! If you had told me the truth in the first place or even in the second place... But I did! I did! This isn't fair. This is mean. She never did anything mean before in her life. I was going to surprise her. I bought her the coat, and we were going to celebrate. Well, sure. I'll get so drunk I won't be able to hit the ground with my hat. Or hers either. That's a trouble with you women. You don't want to hear the truth. I never got in trouble until I told the truth. You're all alike. to knock the whole side of the house out.
Mommy, when are we going? It doesn't matter when we're going, dear, but... But what you have to understand, darling, is that we're... We're leaving, Daddy. Again? Yes. But this time, it's forever. Alvin said we wouldn't get any farther than the station. What does Alvin know about the way Daddy acted? We'll get farther than the station this time, all right? We're going on a long trip. And then when we get back, we're going to have a nice new place to live in. And we're going to have Daisy with us. And we're going to be terribly happy. Just terribly happy. Do you mind if I sit here? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Why, right, but you're a bright-looking little man, isn't he? Uh, yes. He's bright, too. Rather inconvenient having to travel with him at night. You waiting for the Reno bus? Yes, sir. So am I. Because I'm in business out there. Bryce and Hanley. Attorneys at law. I'm Bryce in the event you should need a lawyer. I hadn't thought about it much, but I will need a lawyer, I guess. I understand. Sonny. How would you like to go and buy yourself some candy? No, thank you. It's all right, dear. <laughs> there you are. And there's the candy man, right over there. See? Thank you. <laughs> That's a lovely little fellow. Divorce? Well, in a way. You see, I've left my husband and I guess I'll need a divorce, won't I? My first case was a divorce. I lost it. That's too bad. What happened? The couple made up. Oh. <laughs> Since then, I've been rather careful. I've always tried to make sure that people knew their own minds. But you appear to be a very level-headed young lady, and it would be an honor to represent you. Thank you. Really, it's a shame your husband drinks. Drinks? Why, he never drank a drop in his life. Then he neglects you, doesn't come home at night. Oh, no, no. He's home all the time. Oh, I see. Non-support. Non-support? I'll have you know my husband's a good provider, and he always has been. I'm sorry, stupid of me. You're an attractive woman. Naturally, other men will see that. And when a husband is the jealous type... Jealous? Who said he was jealous? I'm the one who's... Jealousy has nothing to do with it. He wouldn't be blind to your interest in other men. Who's interested in other men? But I don't understand. Surely you're not the type of wife who'd run away and leave your husband to another woman. Who's running away? As for the other woman, she's nothing but... But... I'll have you understand I can take care of my business. Furthermore, what right have you to come up and speak to me anyway? I'm sorry, but I thought you wanted a divorce. I'll thank you to mind your own business, you, you, ambulance chaser. Look, Mommy. Don't eat that. It might be poison. Come on, baby Dublin. We're going home. That Alvin, he's always right.
here. so well, I'd think she'd been drinking. <laughs> Mommy, I smell something. So do I. Daddy's been cooking again. Baby Dumplin, you wait here a minute. She was trying it on for you. I was afraid I'd get the wrong size. Here, look in the pocket. To Blondie? With love. <laughs> you see, I won $200 at the theater. Uh, that's, that's what the phone call was about last night. And uh, I didn't tell you about it because I wanted to surprise you. Anyway, Joan and I went to the theater, and uh, they had an anniversary cake. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Uh, Blondie, look at me. You have to believe me. Oh, I've been such a fool. Oh, that's all right. Everybody's a fool. Here, put your coat on. <laughs> I brought home a bottle of champagne to celebrate. <laughs> I spilled it all. I know. I smelled it. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful, <laughs> and it fits perfectly. Oh, I have a surprise for you, too. I went over the budget again this morning, and I found a way for you to join the trot club. Here's $200. You, you, you mean it? Of course I mean it. <laughs> Oh, thank you, dear. You're swell. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you a late news flash. Huh? Early this evening, the Swan Lake Trout Club was completely destroyed by fire. The estimated damage is $75,000. At a hurried meeting, the board of directors decided to rebuild the clubhouse immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Funds for this project will be raised by assessing each club member $150. $150? Oh. I'll put it back in the bank, dear. <laughs> Mommy. Daisy's sick. I think she has the same thing that Mr. Fuddle has every Sunday morning. <gasps> now I am mixed up. What's the matter, dear? It's that $200. I don't know what to do with it. I thought you were going to put it back in the bank. That's just the trouble. Once you draw money out, it's awfully hard to put it back. Why don't you buy something? She probably will. Both of you eat your breakfast. I'll take care of the budget. Hello, darling. Hello, honey. Hello, Papa. Hello, Angel. Good morning, folks. Good, Good morning. morning. Did you have a nice trip, Mr. Fuddle? Rotten. Uh, what's the matter with his mouth? Now, Ed, don't go looking for trouble. How do you lose his tooth? The Bumstead pulled it out. Oh, he did, did he? Now, Ed. The minute I leave town, that clown has to pull my kid's teeth out. 
Oh, stop him, stop him. Now, Mr. Fettle, you keep out of this. Dagwood, you're late. Don't stop that. Don't go on the wall. Don't go on the wall. Get out of my way. a lot of times, but this is the first time I've ever seen it. What's it? Oh, I give up.